We're going to talk about uh, um, moving a charged particle in a uniform electric field. And so let's review projectile motion a little bit. And then we'll talk about the acceleration of a charged particle in a uniform electric field. And we'll, we'll also talk about how, how do you make an, a uniform electric field. Um, OK, well, remember that um, with projectile motion, here's the ground. And let's say we kicked a football or something um, at a certain angle theta. And of course, it made this nice parabola shape kind of a deal here, something like that. And if we looked at the object at any given time, OK, uh, the only force acting on it was the force of gravity, g. But remember, we also talked about g as a gravitational field. So here's gravitational field lines like this. Now, if you're close to the Earth's surface, the gravitational field is uniform. And what, we, what do we mean by that? It means it doesn't matter where you are, the gravitational field has the same magnitude and direction. It's 9.8 newtons per kilogram down. It's 9.8 newtons per kilogram, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And notice how I'm phrasing that. I'm not calling it meters per second squared, although it is. It's in free fall, right? Once you launch this football, it's in free fall, it's accelerating in the y direction at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. But you can also think of this gravitational field here as 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now that's a field, that's a force field. That's how much force you get because of the property of your object in space. I mean, what property does our football have in space that allows gravity to act on it? It has mass. Gravity applies forces to objects that have mass. And we can you know, solve all kinds of problems with this. Remember that the acceleration in the y direction is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the, in, in the j hat direction, negative j hat direction. What was the acceleration in the x direction here, the horizontal direction? It's 0. OK, and then we can apply that to, to the kinematic equations. OK, remember, um, in the, in the, this acceleration in the y direction is constant. Well, so is it, zero is a constant as well. So you can apply the kinematic equations for constant acceleration in the x and y direction. OK, well, now we've got, um, uh, what, what if we created a uniform electric field? Now, how do you do that? Well, I'll show you. Take two plates of metal. Oh, okay. And what you do is you, you hook this up to a battery somewhere. Okay, so here's my my battery, like a little car battery or something. Robot, robot, robot. yep, okay, robots. <laughs> we'll make this the positive terminal, and this will be the negative terminal. So we'll hook those up. Now, what will happen here is that this will force um, a positive charge onto this plate. And they'll spread out. And then you'll have a negative charge on this plate. Now this will create an electric field between the plates that will look like this. And it will be uniform. Okay, now it's not totally uniform. There's little end effects. You know, you might have a bulging electric field line out here. By the way, what's really cool about this is that if you put a test charge right outside here, wouldn't feel anything would not feel any electric field at all. I mean, it, it looks like it should be repelled by these, but they're, they're too busy being attracted to these, these people over here. Yeah. Woo. Now, so what happens is that what would happen if I took a little positive test charge in that uniform electric field 
and launched it at a certain velocity v. Well, it's going to move like this. It looks just like a gravity field. But now the force that's causing the, um, the change in velocity is not the force of gravity, it's the electric force. Now, by the way, um, what if this is a situation where there is a gravity field as well? Well, you could try adding them together, but in most problems, in most problems, like if you're dealing with a proton and you're shooting a proton, a single proton in a uniform electric field like this, the effect of gravity is going to be insignificant compared to the electric force. So we neglect gravity. However, if you get a problem where they give you a pellet and the pellet has a mass of 10 grams, you are, chances are you are going to have to include gravity in your analysis. So when you draw a free body diagram, you include the electric force as well as the gravity force. But if it's a, if it's a proton or, or something like that, or elect, certainly electron, <laughs> their masses are so tiny compared to the, uh, that the electric force, in the vast majority of problems, the electric force will be so great compared to the uh, gravitational force that you can neglect gravity. Well, let's suppose we have that problem where we're neglecting gravity. Let's look at it right there. Let's draw a free body diagram of my little, my little collection of protons. Could be an ion or something like that. Well, here's the force. And we say, well, what is that force? It's our electric force. Well, that's going to be equal to the charge. This thing has a certain charge on it times the strength of the electric field between these plates. And that'll have to be given. In the next chapter, uh, we're going to talk about Gauss's law and so on. We'll be able to calculate electric fields. But for right now, the electric field has to be given. Um, so here's the, we're given some electric field. We're given the charge on our particle. Now we know what the force is. And we'll say that this, is, this electric force is the net force. Well, what did Newton say about the net force? It will cause the object to accelerate, but that acceleration depends on the object's mass. So what is the acceleration of this object in my uniform electric field? The acceleration the acceleration will be equal to the charge times the electric field. That gives me the, the uh, net force divided by the mass. That'll give me the acceleration. And notice that the direction of the acceleration will be in the same direction as the electric field, unless what is true? Yeah, if the charge is negative, it'll go in the opposite direction, um, uh, the acceleration. Uh, there's no such thing as negative mass, so far as we know. But there is, uh, there is positive charge and negative charge. Like if this was a negative ion, you know, if you, if you had something uh, that, that collected an electron, um, you know, from chemistry, you might remember some negative ions. You could shoot a, a, a negative ion in an electric field and its path will be bent. By the way, um, this is what's used in a cathode ray tube, an old fashioned television. Um, the electric field, there, there's uh, a gun in there, uh, it shoots electrons, and those electrons strike a screen that make it uh, glow with light. And that's how you draw a picture. But you have to take that elect those electrons and you have to uh, direct them against that screen to draw the picture. And they use an electric field to do that. Because if you shot uh, an electron, like let's say we have an electron and we shot it through this electric field at a very high velocity, well it's going to be directed up so it will go up like this and maybe it'll hit a screen over here like a picture tube over here and it will make this glow. And of course you can vary the electric field and vary where these electrons are going to hit. They also use magnetic fields to do the same thing but we're not ready to talk about magnetic fields yet. Um, so this is the acceleration acting on my charged particle. So if you know the charge, 
you know the electric field and you know the mass, you can figure out the acceleration and now you just treat it like projectile motion that we did way back when. Um, so you can figure out, you know, if, it, if it's launched like this, you know, you know the angle. Well, first of all, the horizontal velocity through this electric field is not going to change. Only the vertical velocity is, is, is um, changed by, uh, by this acceleration. So, um, so this is the, the basic equation. Notice I, I put a bubble around it there. You know, that's for you, Seth. And so this is what you need to know if you're in a uniform uh, electric field. Now, if the, if the electric field is not uniform, you can't do that. All right. So take this, and then you can say, well, in the y direction, in this, in this problem, if you make this the x and this the y direction, you can say, well, OK, uh, the velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus a times t. And here's your a. Delta y equals v naught y plus v y over 2 times time. Delta y equals v naught y t plus 1 half a t squared. And v y squared equals v naught y squared plus 2a delta y. So these all still work. Just now you have a new acceleration. Of course, in the x direction, vx equals v naught x. That is, the uh, velocity in the x direction is constant. And of course, delta x is going to be equal to v naught x times t. And so these are the kinematic equations we used for projectile motion. You're just using them now. And now the source of the acceleration is the electric field. Good luck.